Let me just ask two, two additional questions that really impact on patient management, and then we're going to move on to adjuvant therapy. Um, and this is really critical. For somebody who has bulky disease, multiple nodes in, the, in a regional uh, basin, do you recommend radiation therapy at your institutions? And let me start with, let's say, with, with Robert, and then I want to ask a medical oncologist how they feel about this. So, so we know that there is prospective data indicating that radiation decreases the risk of local recurrence. There is debate uh, whether this has an impact on distant recurrence. And um, from that data, we also know that it's the most recent data that was a randomized study stratified patients quite well for head and neck, axilla, and groin. And um, looking at this at our institution, what we would do in the head and neck, the morbidity from the radiation is far less than it would be in the groin. So we are quite reluctant to do any radiation in the groin, even in the presence of uh, bulky disease, just because the morbidity can be substantial. In the head and neck region, we are um, less reluctant to give that radiation. I still don't think that we have good parameters and clear guidelines of who should and should not get radiation. The other adding factor to that is that many of the adjuvant studies that are now being performed may not necessarily allow radiation. So I think all of those factors need to be considered. At our institution, we do feel that the risk of distant disease May, most of the time trumps the risk of local recurrence. So if we are in such a situation that a patient would be eligible for a clinical trial, but radiation is not allowed, we would then recommend the clinical trial and follow the patients for the regional disease. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Last, uh, the follow-up, as you know, was presented at ASCO last, last year. year. Yeah. And, uh, um, and there was quite a bit of morbidity presented in terms of the long-term follow-up, which I'm sure you're well aware of. And I think I specifically asked the, the author of that abstract who presented it, who would he give uh, uh, adjuvant radiation to? And his answer was probably nobody. So it, the, my sense is that, yes, it does definitely decrease the risk of regional recurrence. But that's sort of uh, the, the improvement and the selection of patients are so high risk for metastatic disease that I think that it, it so well, outweighs for, di distant metastatic for distant metastatic disease. Survival so, was going in the wrong direction also in that trial. But Mario, I think that for that though, I think that that's really an unfair uh, because that power was, that study was not yeah. power to look at survival. No. Fair enough, fair enough. So I think that we can't really look at that and say that the okay. survival went in a different direction. I think it was not power to look at that. Okay. Now, now your answer, going in the, right direction, the answer to the question that you made though was based on bulky lymph nodal disease, what about extracapsular extension? Would that change your mind? So extracapsular extension at our institution, yes, we do use this. So this is macroscopic extracapsular extra extension, not microscopic. Correct. Yeah. We would use that. But again, even with that, Jeff, in the, in the groin area, especially in patients who are already may have some component of lymphedema, who have venous insufficiency in, in the lower extremity, and who are obese, all of these factors increase the risk. And I am not sure that the morbidity outweighs the, the, um, the potential benefit. Yeah, I think I would agree that when it comes to radiating the groin, we choose our patients carefully yes. at our institution. Someone who's obese, has wound healing issues, uh, we don't feel will be reliable at taking care of wounds. Uh, someone who's at high risk for developing either wound infection or lymphedema, I think that's a bad candidate for adjuvant radiation to the groin. Well, Mario, no there question. may be a little bit of information that we can glean from the ECOG 1609 trial, the adjuvant trial with ipilimumab versus interferon. They actually do allow radiation as long as it is uh, completed three weeks before starting the treatment arms. And there's about a 12-week uh, time that you could bring the patient on. So hopefully there'll be some initial data that we could work with. And I do believe in that study, they were stratified. Yeah, if it was radiation. a stratification factor, so, that's important. So I think it would, uh, and it is actually a study that only allows 3B and 3C patients. So I think the likelihood of getting some real information is, is better in that study than in anything I else. I think it'll be interesting to see, though, how many patients do actually get right. radiation. And the reason being is that if you look at the time from, from having completed the lymph node dissection, and then starting the therapy. It's a, if you have wound healing issues and other difficulties with the uh, have, after no dissection, the time frame of completing radiation is very short. At our institution, 
it is more often than not that we don't have enough time to complete that. So we then forego the radiation. And we look at this very carefully. So how many days do we have? To yeah, I think this? basically that's exactly our experience, that if there's any post-operative complications that requires them some extensive healing process, they won't finish in time. It has to go completely without a hitch and, and smoothly uh, so that the radiation can get done in plenty of time.